All right, it is six o'clock and I will call the 10th regular Common Council meeting to order. Will the clerk please state the quote of the day? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The ability to learn is the most important quality a leader can have. Thank you. Will the clerk please call the roll? Alderperson Ackley? Here. Alderperson Decker? Here. Alderperson Feldy? Here. Alderperson Felicki Paneski? Here. Alderperson Heideman? Here. Alderperson Mitchell? Excused. Alderperson Perella? Excused. Alderperson Salazar? Here. Alderperson Rust? Here. Alderperson Ramey? Here. There are eight present. Thank you. If you're able, will you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, next is approval of the minutes. Alder Feldy. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve. Second. There's been a motion second for the minutes. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes, please state aye. Aye. Any objection? Minutes are approved. Anyone for public forum? No one this evening. All right. Next, we'll go on to mayoral appointments. City Attorney. Thank you. First, uh, the following appointments for your confirmation. Uh, Kim Meller to be considered for appointment to the City Plan Commission and Kelsey Bird to be considered for appointment to the City Sustainable Task Force. And those will lay over. Next is confirmation of mayoral appointments, city attorney. Pursuant to section 2-937 of the Sheboygan Municipal Code relating to the position of the Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations, uh, we, being the mayor and the city administrator, hereby recommend that Tony Muse be appointed as the Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations for the city of Sheboygan, effective August 29th, 2022. Alder Feldy. I move to confirm. Second. There's been a motion second. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Please refer to your muni code. Other person, Heideman? Aye. Rust? Aye. Feldy? Aye. Thank you. The person Flicky Paneski, I'm sorry. Aye. Thank you. Eight ayes. All right, that's approved. Next item number seven, city attorney. Next item is uh, submitting the following appointment for your confirmation. Alder Joe Heideman to be considered for appointment to the Maywood Environmental Park Advisory Board. Thank you. Alder Feldy. I move to confirm. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote as well. Heideman. Alderperson Rust? Aye. Alderperson Feldy? Aye. Eight ayes. All right, that's approved. Next, we have a presentation on the $5.3 million swing bridge grant funded funding, um, which our Director of Planning and Development, Chad Pelshek, and Public Works Director, David Beeble, will kick off. Thank you. Okay, so hang tight. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. There we go. Thank you. So today we're going, Dave and I are going to take team a presentation um, about this uh, Sheboygan River pedestrian swing bridge that broke the news late last week about the city receiving a grant for 5.3 million. So we'll get into a little bit more details on the project, but in a high level, we're gonna run through a couple slides. This was originally proposed back, I think in 2007. Um, it's been in a number of years of planning documents um, and then kind of shelved, if you will, because there wasn't a, num a lot of funding opportunities available until some recent uh, Biden infrastructure grant funding. So the location for this bridge um, would be uh, connecting the South Pier to the Riverfront District. So this would be uh, connected in near the Parker Johns. 
on the end of Virginia Avenue where Virginia Avenue terminates into uh, the Sheboygan River and then goes across to the South Pier District which was originally planned to have a bridge when that was designed back in the early 2000 uh, era. Um, so the infrastructure and the kind of promenade and stuff at the South Pier District is, a, is already in place. So this has been a part of the city's planning efforts for a number of years. The image on the left uh, shows the South Pier design guidelines um, planned from 2003 that had a uh, proposed connector across the river at that location. And then the Harbor Center Master Plan uh, Phase 3, which was adopted in 2007, um, also showed that uh, as well, connecting the two sides of the river. So just to step back and give you a little bit of uh, flavor for what was down there. You'll, some of you may recall this and seen this in the past, but these are old historic uh, photographs of, of South Pier before it was South Pier and when it was coal yards and um, crude oil tanks and all of that kind of stuff. So this is a, a picture from about probably 1960s or so um, before it was developed. This is a, a more recent one. Um, but you can see that it had its industrial use for a long time and the city uh, saw a vision uh, and moved forward. This is uh, recently and then as early as a couple of years ago with the housing development. So the um, location that's proposed is the narrowest part of the river kind of in the middle of this image. So this is uh, showing what that uh, promenade on South Pier at the top image looks like where the bridge would go and then the image on this uh, bottom kind of shows the uh, from the river um, the area where it would connect on both sides. So why this location? Uh, this is the narrowest part of the river at 150 feet. Um, the as I stated prior the improvements to South Pier have been planned for this addition. Uh, talked to, it's been talked about extensively over the years. There just wasn't a funding source to uh, fund it. Na there's navigation channel limitations as being a um, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers uh, federal navigation channel that restricts some of the opportunities that might be out there to connect the two sides of the river, uh, the clearance envelope, and then this uh, has some access points to the A Street Bridge for operation. So this is just an image showing the bridge. Um, this isn't the final design, this is a concept uh, plan, but uh, the process will ultimately come out with some kind of uh, final design. It's been 12 years since this was originally proposed, so there's probably some new innovations and technologies that can come into place. Um, but the bridge will primarily stay open on a most of the time it'll be open for boat traffic because that's one of the hindrances that the uh, charter fishermen have shown over the years is that they don't want to wait for the bridge to open. Um, so the bridge would just have scheduled times to close, uh, 15 minutes on the hour or you know different dedicated time frames. but on, on a given day it would be open more than it would be closed. It would be just the opposite of what you think a bridge uh, would function. Most people would think the bridge would be closed and then open for boat traffic, but the boat traffic is the, uh, you know, is is pretty aggressive and, and needs to be uh, kept that way, especially with the Federal Navigation Channel. So this is just another image showing what that bridge would look like in the open position um, and the, you know, the connect connection. So I just want to we those of you that have been involved, we've uh, worked on different connection issues. Um, through a number of planning efforts with the Harbor Center Business Improvement District, and that's where the uh, the Route 42, the um, trolley for the Shoreland Mitchell came into place to try to connect the two sides of the river, but we still hear over and over connection issues of people having to go through the A Street Rotary, the busiest rotary intersection in the city, to get up to the downtown from the South Pier. So um, with the huge investment on the South Pier, um, you know, it makes sense to try to connect these two sides of the river and especially with um, the amount of people that are coming in on a yearly basis to the tune of 70 to 80,000 people through the resort um, that are on South Pier. So David's going to talk a little bit about the grant and some of the requirements and why this project was chosen and where we go from here. Thanks, Chad. That was a nice recap of kind of the history of South Pier and, 
in how we, we arrived at this. And it's pretty interesting if you look at some of those old photos back from the 60s and 70s in terms of what that land was and its use and what it is today. It's pretty transforming. So let's, I, let's talk about the grant in and of itself. It's very specific, and that's why uh, this project was chosen, is because there's specific criteria. Uh, we, we, you know, we, we hear, well, let's put the money towards roads. Well, that's not, a, that's not uh, an eligibility criteria of the grant. So when you go for federal grants, you, you look at the criteria if, in and of itself, and then you look for projects such as this uh, opportunity for the bridge. And that's partly why the bridge hasn't been proposed or built is because when we look at our capital improvements, there's other priorities in terms of our existing infrastructure and needs that take precedent over it. But when we have an opportunity for a grant to get federal funding that's gonna pay for a large, large portion of the project, now the project becomes feasible. So, like I said, the, the grant is very detailed. And now that we've been awarded the grant, it, it means it's gonna start a process. And the process is gonna take several years. There's, again, the con it's a concept at this point. So we actually need to then work with the grant uh, in the DOT to actually bring on a designer, look at the design, what makes the most sense. Is a swing bridge the best option? Is a lift bridge in this location? Is there an opportunity to shift it slightly to get it a little bit higher even so that boats may be able to transport uh, underneath it without needing to be raised as much? So there's opportunities to have that type of discussion. There's going to be a lot of public input through this process. And uh, so again, that, that's just the beginning of it, of the design. So as Chad mentioned, it, it came eligible through the through the Biden uh, infrastructure process. So what were some of the requirements? Safety is a huge component of the grant eligibility and we talk about pedestrians and, and bicyclists that primarily are gonna be using this facility. Right now they're all being sent to the roundabout intersection at 8th in Indiana as well as the A Street Bridge. The A Street Bridge has over 12,000 vehicles a day as well as the intersection. So it's very congested and very difficult to navigate if you're a pedestrian or if you're in a bicycle. Again, environmental sustainability. Environmental and sustainability is a big focus of the new infrastructure bill. Uh, reducing greenhouse gases. So how can we do that? Well, that's one way is by uh, reducing trips. If you're on South Pier or if you're on the riverfront and you wanna to go to the other side, could they, it, it's either a well over a mile walk and about almost 20 minute uh, walk or you hop in your car and you take, take, take the drive around. So again, we are in a non-attainment zone. What does that mean? Our air quality in Sheboygan County is not meeting the federal air quality standards. So being in a non-attainment zone put us in a higher score for that for this project because where we're going to reduce emissions. Quality of life, again, helping with the quality of life is promoting walkability and pedestrian bicycle friendly uh, options. Uh, it increases your walking score. Again, reducing the emissions, um, promoting energy efficiency. Another aspect is the economy. Look at the economic development that has occurred on the South Pier District from the beginning, from 2003 to today. It's trans, it, it, the, the slides themselves show the transformation in the millions of dollars of economic input and activity and development on that, on that. This is only going to further spur economic development and competitiveness between the two sides, allowing easier access for visitors and residents to enjoy that, that, that area. Uh, another aspect of state of good repair just means continue to do the good things in terms of maintenance that you're doing in your community and, and Sheboygan scores high in that. There's partnerships and collaboration. We've had partnerships with the bid and, and, and Chad's area in terms of downtown development and in the, in the South Pier District. The other aspect was innovation, a swing bridge for pedestrian. They're, they're not, there's, there's very few in the country that actually have movable pedestrian only spans. Most of them are for traffic or for, or, or for roads. And uh, so the, the feds at the, that were scoring this felt, hey, this is innovative, this is, this is good. We, you know, this is an area where we wanna prove that 
the, the taxpayer dollars in, in infrastructure are gonna be used wisely and this is an opportunity to, to demonstrate that type of inter, innovation. They looked at the cost benefit. The total cost benefit was positive on this, looking at around $40 million of economic development over, over the lifespan. And it serves a, a specific population. Sheboygan is an area and the downtown area does have its challenges with, with um, you know, the underserved in, in the area. Yes, we have many new apartments, but yet a lot of those areas surrounding those are, 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 are in need. And the census tracts within those areas qualified as well. So you put this all together and the project scored very high. So it was a nationwide competitive grant. We're, we're actually funded in, this is, this is unique, is we're considered, we're, we're considered a rural recipient, even though we're an urbanized area, but our area is urbanized under 200,000. So we're, our urbanized area is between 50 and 200,000, so that qualifies us as a rural urbanized area. Uh, some of the other projects that uh, were, were funded, there are only four in the state, the other three were Potawatomi uh, Community, uh, there was a multimodal safety connected project, the city of Beloit also, again, pedestrian bicycle uh, accommodations, and as well as the Oneida uh, Nation bus garage. So we applied for a, a grant of 5.3, roughly almost 5.4 million, and our match will be, at, at the end of all this, will be right around 1.3. That there's all sorts of possible matches of this. It's not just necessarily going to be funded with city funds. There's, with, there's, this is a federal grant. So there's an opportunity to use state grants as a match in this. CMAC, which is Congestion Mitigation Air Quality. It's a grant program that only a few counties in the entire state qualify because of our air quality. Sheboygan's one of them. And we just recently uh, are using a CMAC grant to upgrade our traffic signal modernization for better traffic flow to help reduce uh, emissions as well. So there's an opportunity to use that. There's other grants with uh, the DNR and, and other DOT. Uh, the CDBG as well as this is in a TID and I believe uh, TID 17. So we're gonna continue to work on this. Again, we, this is very early. This is exciting news that we were a recipient of this re award. And there's a lot of things that will be brought before this board and this common council as we progress along this path. But it's, uh, again, a great step in the beginning of a long, long uh, proposed project. So as we get more information from the DOT, we will keep everyone informed. We will need to take a look at the grant re, uh, requirements as well as some of the design team and, and having public engagement and uh, how, how we will manage that as well. This is a, a DOT project. So we're, we're familiar with doing many DOT projects and they um, are lengthy in process. And that's a good thing because there's a lot of things we wanna make sure we have good community input. So again, some renderings. There's a model down on the first floor as you come into City Hall as well. And I guess Chad and I are here to answer any questions if you have any this evening. All right, thank you, Director Beeble and Director Pelshek. Uh, Director Beeble gets extra points today for an appropriate tie for this discussion. So <laughs> there's bridges on it if you saw that. But uh, um, anyone on the council have any questions for uh, David or Chad? Uh, Dean? I just had one quick question. So, like, you, that would be open most of the or be open most of the time for boat traffic. Now, what about would this be utilized in the winter time also with this yes, design? Yes, yes. So, it would be closed in the winter time. Well, it, it, it the channel has to rem as long as there's there's ice open open water. Okay. The bridge is operational, so it would probably remain open, and it th there'll be times there'll be specific times. So again, a lot of this will be public engagement engagement in, in learning with the boating community as well as the public. So there may be times in the evening where the boating is not so heavy, it could be may, remain closed more often than open. Or likewise, if we do, the, the bridges plan to be operated from the A Street Bridge House. And there'll be camera systems, there'll be uh, dial uh, communication from the bridge tender house to operate the bridge and have communication with, in, with the uh, intercoms and so forth as well from that. That's the plan. Again, there's opportunities where, 
you know, the charter boats go out at a certain time, and after that, then there's not a lot of boating. It could be remain closed and a little bit more open for pedestrians. So there'll be opportunities to, to work with that throughout the process. But it's, it's not going to be closed all the time and wait for a boat, because that section of the river is much more boat traffic, in other words. Alder Remy. Is there a deadline uh, to have it done by? Does the grant expire? Again, we haven't received the 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 um, the contract yet, so we're we're waiting. On it. Typically, there's a three to four year uh, window uh, for planning, design, and construction. Alder Flicky Paneski. Thank you. Um, was was this application the same application that was put in when 2007? Is that when it was, or is this a new application? The, the, they, this is a new application, but it took much of the original data from the original proposal from 2007, and then used economic figures to update the numbers in terms of looking at cost, the CPI indexes, gross domestic product to, to get today's dollar figure for what it was originally proposed to be built back in 07. Did we have support from the SCEDC? For this, for this application? Yes. We did, well, they, they supported after the fact, now that it got funded, they, we, didn't get, <laughs> we didn't have any need for letters of support from partners for the grant application. That was my question, thank you. Additional questions from Alders? All right, seeing none, thank you gentlemen. Um, just had some quick mayoral announcements. Um, just wanted to thank those again who attended uh, Esslingen Fest yesterday. Um, again, this is our 55 year anniversary uh, with being sister cities uh, with Esslingen. The Sheboygan Sun recently did a wonderful article recognizing um, the sister city uh, partnership with Germany. So go check it out on their website as well too. So that's all I have. Next, we'll move along to the consent agenda. Um, items 11 through 22, Alder Feldy. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I move to receive the receive and file all ROs, receive all RCs, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Is there a second? Second. There's been a motion second. Any discussion? Alder Heideman. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm looking at the ordinance. I have one question. Uh, when the task force looked at the imp impact of what it was going to have in those areas, did they actually involve the property over owners in that area in helping make that decision? Whether they thought it was ad if they didn't want to have the dog parks there or, or, or that, were, were the local residents included in this or, at all or not? I don't know. So I'll. I I see uh, Superintendent Joe Curlin is here. Shorter answer is yes. The city did do the citywide um, survey a few uh, months I, back. I understand about the survey, Mayor. That that. Yep. But that, what happens if the, the, and that information is compiled and probably would be positive, and I think it would be. But are the actual property owners that are connected to the beaches and connected to these other were they contacted as to what the effect was for them? Joe, do you want to add to that? Go backwards. I don't want to go back. So to, to answer that, no, specifically, we did not. Um, so you wouldn't, if, if, if you, I had a dog run going right past me, and I was a property owner, I have no say in it whatsoever. At this time, we have not. We, we do plan on working with each neighborhood association um, oh, in that okay. area as we develop that plan for each of those parks. Okay. One other thing, uh, tonight it went down at the end of Indiana Avenue. Okay. And there's a red sign that says no pets. And there's a green sign right underneath the red sign yeah. that says dogs on leash I can and pick up after yourself. I, I, I would, you know, I don't know why you would have two signs. Yeah. And if this wasn't adopted yet, why would they be able to have the leash animals on that, that corridor? Yeah, I can explain that, and I, th I think maybe I need to remove the bottom sign. The, the, the top one, the red one, says no pet on beach. Okay, and this is right before the, the, the walkway, from, right. you know? Mm -hmm. So 
The second one is, is for the walkway. Dogs are allowed on, be, on leash on our pathways in, in the city. Okay. So it's a little confusing. I've had people ask that. Maybe I just need to remove the bottom sign to, to remove confusion. Well, because I, when I was down there, I watched a guy walk right onto the beach with the dog right. on a leash. And then when you enter the beach from Indiana, we do have a sign right there, the, the main entrance. And, and we may have to, there's getting to be more and more entry areas off of the, 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 the not, it's not really a parking area, but the, the green uh, space where a lot of people do park on the grass. Mm -hmm. They're making their own pathways onto the beach. And we're finding that, well, people aren't walking all walking on you know the designated pathways and so they're not able to see the signs so we may have to put up a few more signs along that area and and signage is a huge process that this committee wants to work on so we know the beach one we're going to really we want to get creative with it and we want to really want to make sure we're marking that beach area correctly and and to, to tell you um just off just to say this is really a good thing. Not having anything, there is no beach access anymore at, at Lakeview Park. And even if it goes down, it's, it's, it's a pretty rough area. To be able to tell people or say, this is not where you should be. You should not be between Indiana and Illinois, okay? This is, this is no dogs. But over here, hey, bring your dogs, uh, use a leash, and there's an area for you. You shouldn't be at the land. Here's your area. Um, Qantas Park. This fenced-in area. Eventually, mm -hmm. this is where you can be. You know, um, same with moose. Same, you know, the ones we've picked out, Cleveland. It's an area that people can go, and you can talk to them now and say, "You're not supposed to be here." You know, this, this is not a good place. You can be here with your leash. You can be here off leash. It's giving them a place to go. Okay, yeah, and, and I understand. I was on the, the council when we approved the on 18th Street. Works out fantastic. Great dog park. <laughs> A lot of people loved it. It was in, in a perfect spot, and at, at that time, that area wasn't being used at all. I want to make sure that this is done right and correctly. The neighbors that are affected by this, these, uh, this ordinance, that they're involved in this. And my other question is, how do you, how do you enforce these things? If, whether the guy has the dog, are you going to have an officer down there, Chief? Uh, it's, it's like, you know... How do you determine who's the good pet owner, who's not? And, and that, that's part of the problem right now, is, is it is really hard to enforce all the ordinances everywhere, you know? Um, it, it just really is. So again, this, I think this help, this is gonna help with enforcement by, by giving the people a place to go and be able to, you know, educate them. This, this committee really wants to work on signage and they wanna work on education and just, uh, you know, in the effort to be more pet friendly in the community. I, I hope it's successful. Thank you. Alder Decker. I just wanted to echo uh, um, Joe's comments or Joe Curlin's comments about, um, this is kind of a phase then thing. We would look at it at public works as this kind of a, this is a phase, this is the first phase of it. We're gonna see how this goes. We're gonna, you know, monitor how this is and and, and, and we'll model things as as we go along. When we, um, and the, this, 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 just the first part is just a leash area. It's gonna be for, you know, the, um, but, when, but later on, with they have the, the, the runs at like Moose Park and Cleveland Park. They'll be working with the neighborhood um, on the Indiana Quarter Neighborhood Committee. We'll be, we'll be working with them to, to determine what's the best place to put these things. So it, it's, it's, they are involving the neighborhoods. Alder Ackley. I just wanted to also mention the fact that this group is not new. We've been around for a couple of years now. So we're not making decisions willy nilly. You know, we're trying to do this in an appropriate manner and take it step by step. And that's why it is going kind of slowly. As a pet owner, I would love to be able to have a dog spot right away on the north side where I can just run over and take my dogs. But that's not being responsible. So that's why we're taking our time to do this. And I appreciate your questions. But I want you to feel assured that, you know, asking neighbors questions, that will come down the pike when we're ready. But right now we're just in the planning stages of getting these things pulled together. Additional comments from Alders? Seeing none. This is a roll call vote for the consent agenda.
Feldy. Yay. Oh. Alder Heideman. Aye. Alder Rust. Aye. Eight ayes. All right. The consent agenda is approved. Reports of officers, items 23 and 24 will be referred to the Finance Personnel Committee. Items for resolutions, items 25 through 28 will be referred to their respective committees as well. Next, we have reports of committee, item number 29, RC number 732223 by the Public Works Committee, to whom was referred direct referral resolution number 512223 by Elder Persons Decker Prella, authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with the Smith Group for the study and design of the Harbor Center Marina upgrades in a two-phased approach, wherein phase one includes analyzing existing conditions and phase two includes designing a new dock system and breakwater slash harbor improvements as identified in the scope of services provided August 2nd, 2022. Alder Decker. Thank you, Eric. I make a motion to approve or to adopt the, the resolution. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Any discussion on this item? Alder Flicky Paneski. Thank you. Um, do do we know how much this is this study is going to cost? And if it's in two phases, are we fronting the cost for the whole phase all at once? Director Beeble, you want to take that? Yeah, it, the, the, the first two phases go hand in hand. So, I mean, the, the total cost of the study is roughly around 79000 So th the first part of it is looking at the wave conditions and the harbor conditions, reviewing what they did back in 2016, with that kind of being a worst case scenario to help then use that for the design of the docks. But we don't, long term, the, the phasing of this will be what is the long term ultimate build out of the future of the marina in terms of its eventual replacement of those docks. Right now we, the, we've we lost the, the G dock which is some of our larger vessel docks so it's not available this year and for it's one of our highest earning revenue dock systems as well. But it's also right at one of the beginning of the mouth of the marina, which takes a lot of the brunt of the wave action and uh, f f wave flow, as well as ice flow during the winter. The group will look at that, analyze it in de design, and look at ultimately new dock systems for the future. Now, ultimately with the work that is being done on South Pier, the, 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 the federal breakwater, they've done significant upgrades as well as it's not completed yet. So what we're, we're, we're looking at is once that is done, that re, re, reconstructed or, or enhanced self breakwater, the goal here is to see if that is gonna enhance also help reduce the action that is affecting the marina. That for, therefore, that in the future, once that's done and studied as part of the phasing, well, maybe we're hoping is that it should help also reduce the, the, re, the resiliency and the robustness that may need to be in the existing marina that's today. That's why we're having so much damage and we're at the point of the end of its life of 30 years. So these first two phases, that's all we're authorizing is the 79,000 and the majority of it is in the design and upgrade of the dock system. There's, there's several dock vendors that have to be analyzed and vetted throughout this process. And that's the majority of the cost of, of the first two phases. Thank you. Uh, additional questions on this item? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Alder Feldy? Aye. Alder Heidemann? Aye. Alder Rust? Aye. Eight ayes. All right, that item is approved. Next, other matters authorized by law, city attorney. There is uh, one RO by the city clerk submitting a license application. And that will be referred to the Licensing Hearing and Public Safety Committee. Next is a contemplated closed session. Alder Feldy? Thank you, Mayor. 
I move to convene in closed session pursuant to state mandate um, 19.851G for conferring with legal counsel for the city who is rendering oral advice regarding strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is or is likely to be involved. To wit, Ab Abigail H. Hernandez versus City of Sheboygan Police Department, ERD case number CR2021019901 EEOC case number 26G2022000119 C. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. This is a roll call vote to go into closed session. Alder Feldy? Aye. Alder Heidemann? Aye. Alder Rust? There are eight ayes. All right, that is approved. This closed session will be only for elected officials as well as Chief Domagowski and Administrator Wolf. And we'll convene in 305. <laughs>